Hello everyone, this is Jinjinx, and I'm Tuna, and we're the, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math Guys. Guys. And in this video, we'll be covering the meta elemental sets for Lance. So, as it turns out, elemental is the meta for Lance. Compared to the raw sets that you can run for Lance, elemental matching will be dealing more damage. When comparing these elemental sets to the raw lances we covered in the meta video covering those sets, link in the top right and the description, elemental lance can get around 7% or so more damage on all of its bread and butter poking combos on the high end. For example, with Black Diablos who is immune to dragon damage and has a 35 hits in value to ice and a 72 when softened on the belly to sever, the Valkana Lance will be dealing 7.59 to 7.18% more damage compared to the Runa Nagagante Lance. And because Biblos' belly has a 10 hits in value to thunder for the Rajang Lance, the Valk's hitting 2.49% higher and 1.85% higher respectively for each combo. However, this is pretty much one of the best case scenarios for Elemental Lance, and we will be covering what the average damage increase is on all of the various different builds when we get to them. And when we discussed average percent of damage increase for Elemental sets over raw sets, we'll be using a 65-25 hits and value ratio for those calculations. This is a decent average hit zone value ratio for a softened weak point on a 3 star weak monster's main weak points. And because the two main raw options are the Runer and Rajang Lances, and they both do have Thunder and Dragon, we'll be assuming a 10 hit zone value for those when comparing them to other elements. Realistically, using a Fire Lance against a Fire Weak monster does not mean the monster is going to be immune to Dragon and Thunder, so this gives us a good average idea of how the damage increase looks like. We'll also be covering both Guard 3 and Guard 5 variants for each of these elements. It turns out the elemental builds actually gain very little from running Guard 3 versus Guard 5. They only gain about 3 to 5 raw, which is about 1 damage per poke. So, unless you're speedrunning, we generally recommend running the Guard 5 set. Also, there is a lot to cover when it comes to elemental lances, so quick reminder, we do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and things that interest us, and Tuna does stream live on Twitch almost every single day. And also, disclaimer, even though we are giving you what are the most optimal damage sets, we aren't telling you you have to use them. Play what you like and enjoy yourselves, it's a video game. We just like to provide factual information about what are the highest damage sets. Now before we get into the sets, we need to discuss what style of elemental build works best on Lance. If you just want to see the sets, time scrimp on the scrimp. There are six styles of elemental Lance you can make. True crit, crit element plus master's touch, elemental acceleration with master's touch or crit element, true element acceleration, frostcraft, and plain old master's touch. We do plan on putting out a video explaining all of these in depth and comparing when they'll be strong, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when that video goes live. But in the meantime, let's run through each and determine which is the best for Lance. First off, Elemental Acceleration is weak. Numerically, it's always weaker than running Crit Element or True Crit Element, at least in every comparison we've made or seen thus far. And when combined with Crit Element, it's still weaker than True Crit Element. You can combine it with Master's Touch, but you're better off combining Master's Touch with Crit Element because it results in higher damage. The only exception to this is Pep CBs. Files on CB cannot crit, so Crit Element does nothing for file damage. If you're playing an SAD focused playstyle on Pepsi Bs, then the only set bonus that will increase your file damage is Elemental Acceleration. An important note though is that this is only for Pepsi Bs that focus on SAEDs. If you are playing a Savage Axe focused playstyle, you should be running either True Crit Element or Crit Element with Master's Touch. And Frostcraft won't work on Lance because Frostcraft specifically synergizes with Crit Draw sets. True Crit Element has to run Polish or Razor Sharp because it can't run Master's Touch. In theory, this is the highest possible damage for Elemental Lance, but it's impossible to run. Lance is the most sharpness hungry weapon in the game. The only other weapon coming close is being IG. Dual Blades has an innate Razor Sharp built into the weapon, which makes it only lose sharpness every third hit. Lance hits almost as frequently, but loses sharpness every hit. Master's Touch is mandatory for Lance. You simply lose too much sharpness otherwise. And there's a further issue with True Crit Element, which is that the Silver Rathalos set is very inefficient. You just cannot fit all of Lance's skills into a build running True Crit Element. And that's before you even consider trying to put in sharpness mitigation skills. This leaves two options. Crit Element plus Master's Touch, and just Master's Touch. 
And you would think because we're running Element that Crit Element plus Master's Touch would be the natural choice, right? After all, Lance has low motion values and high hit frequencies, so you'd want more elemental damage. Well, no. See, the problem is an Iceborne Lance has a 0.7 elemental modifier on every poke, meaning it only deals 70% of its elemental damage. In addition, in Iceborne they added Offensive Guard, which has amazing synergy with Lance. Once you learn the timing for it, you can easily keep it up at least 80% if not more of the time while fighting a monster. But Offensive Guard only multiplies your raw damage. All of these changes made it so that in Iceborne the Lance meta is element for damage. But because of this 0.7 modifier, investing in any elemental damage skills past your weapon's base amount is inefficient compared to investing in raw skills. This also means our choices are going to end up being the lances that get high raw damage while also having some elements. For example, if we look at the same 65-25 average ratio that we were talking about earlier, if we compare the damage on our three basic pokes, so a normal poke, an up poke, and the last poke with increased motion value, we can see that for the Valhazark Lance, running Dragon Attack 6 actually loses us damage, and so does running crit element on the set. And on top of that, a Shara Lance set with Awakened Element deals even more damage. We can also see that with the Nemo Lance for Water, when we run Water Attack 6 instead of more EFR multiplies, we also lose damage. Out of the various ones that I checked, the only one that actually gains damage from running Elemental Attack 6 is the Kirin Lance. However, the Kirin Lance loses to the Zenogre Lance in damage, which loses to the Rajang Lance in damage. So in essence, the Lance Elemental meta follows the same path as the Devil Joe weapons did in the base game Monster Hunter World. You run full raw damage Master's Touch sets, and the base element is a nice bonus that pushes you over pure raw options. As a final note, Notes, the EFR calculations we're going to be showing for these builds all assume you have Offensive Guard active. The reason for this is because Elemental Lancers get a little less damage out of Offensive Guard being active than Raw Lancers do. So in other words, if an Elemental Lance set beats a Raw Lance set with Offensive Guard active, it beats it even more if both don't have Offensive Guard active. So having that active in the EFR does let us see for certain whether Elemental Lance Lances beat raw or not. Alright, let's move on to the sets. The Thunderlance set is a set we've seen before. The best Thunderlance is the Rajang Lance. You probably recognize this because it was the highest damage raw lance in the raw lance video. Well, it's also the highest damage Thunderlance from Monsters Weak to Thunder. Depending on hit zone values and attack, the Zen Lance ends up hitting about 5 to 7% lower, and the Kirin Lance about 8 to 14. Thunder Lances kind of suck stat-wise. This set does run a piece of high rank armor though, which makes you take about 12% or so more damage per hit. If you want to run a full Master Rank set, you'll run this set instead. Unfortunately, because you don't hit 100% affinity and you only have 20 units of white, you might end up losing your white sharpness, but as long as you maintain white for over half the hunt, you'll still outdamage other Lance options. At least it will outdamage the other Thunder Lance options, but at that point, if you are hitting blue for a significant period of time, you should just use either the Rune and Rigagante Lance or use a status Lance like a Bagel Lance. Thunder weapons aren't that great. The main issue with Rajang Lance is that it can't fit in comfort skills or multiplayer skills. Losing any of the decos for flinch free, guard up, or health boost loses us a lot of damage. If you want to run any of these skills, you're better off just running the Ruiner or Gigante set in the Raw Lance meta video. The Ruiner set with comfort or multiplayer skills will outdamage any Thunder Lance option with those same skills. Here's also a guard 5 version of this set. It only loses one attack boost, which isn't a huge deal but it has the same issue as the Guard 3 version. You can't sub out any of the skills without a huge damage or effective sharpness drop. So for multiplayer comfort sets, just run the Ruiner Lance. Next up we have what is arguably the best elemental lance, which is the Valkana Lance. So the Valkana Lance hits a juicy 784.24 EFR with 45 effective element with a Guard 3 set. Now this does end up hitting lower potential damage by a point or two compared to the fire or dragon sets we'll be covering. However, this is close in damage to both of those while having over twice as many viable matchups. And let's be honest, this land's damn sexy. In fact, as a general use relatively comfy lance, unless a monster is completely immune to ice damage, this will be matching or beating the damage on the Runa Nogagante lance. Now this damage calculation does assume the Runa Nogagante isn't dealing dragon damage. 
but the dragon damage on the Rudin Nogagante Lance is so low that as a general rule, unless the monster has twice the dragon hit zone value it does for ice, you'll be dealing more with the Volcana compared to the Runer Lance. And again, it damn sexy. Additionally, it's a very flexible lance. If you want additional handicraft, if you want more health boost, if you want to have flinch free or guard up, you can easily substitute any of the attack boost or challenger related decorations or charms in this set to get what you need. Just make sure you add in some crit eye to hit 100% affinity still. Now on the 65-25 hit zone value ratio we mentioned earlier, assuming a 10 dragon hit zone value, this beats the Runenurga Gante by about 5.17 to 4.89% depending on combo. And for the Rijang Lance, with a thunder hit zone value of 10, we're looking at 1.1% to 0.5% more damage. Now if a monster is ice weak and has a decent thunder hit zone value, the Rijang Lance can start matching or even beating the damage on the Velk Lance. But this set is just so much comfier than the Rajang Lance gets. Additionally, if you want to run Guard 5 on this set, you just have to change out the charm, and all it really costs you is one attack boost, which is maybe a damage per poke, depending on hits and value and rounding. Now, this Lance is the best against anything that is 3 star weak to ice. This is your go to for Lunastra, Zenoga, Seething Bagel, etc. However, it's also the best option for Teostra. Even though Teostra is more weak to water than he is to ice, the stats on this are simply higher than the water lance we'll be covering in a bit. Another interesting matchup this is very strong against is Great Gyros. Same deal, Great Gyros is weaker to water than ice, but this still ends up dealing more damage than the water lance. Although the Rajang Lance does deal pretty much the same damage against Great Gyros. Overall, if you are going to build one Elemental Lance, we'd recommend this one. Volcano weapons are gorgeously designed, and this is one of the few that are actually meta, so we definitely recommend taking advantage of that. Next up we have the Fire Lances. For Fire Lance, the slowest lance is by far the standout. That's Silver Rathalos. For high raw with decent elemental weapons, slowest weapons are the go-to. 270 base true raw, purple sharpness, and 20% affinity so you can fit in more raw skills let us hit a very high EFR of 784.24. With offensive guard. This is only 6.7 lower EFR than our Ruiner Lance. And with 48.75 effective element, you're hitting around 7 to 10 fire damage per poke, depending on the hit zone value of the fire weak monster. With 105% affinity on softened weak points, 20 units of purple will be plenty as long as you're precise and vigilant with keeping your target softened. But if you prefer to run 30 units, you can easily sub out an Agitator Deco for a Handicraft Deco for minimal damage loss. And even if you do drop into white, the damage loss is about 5 to 6% total, which isn't that big of a deal. And if you don't have any specific decos for this, you can pretty easily change out the charm to a handicraft or agitated charm and still achieve the same skills with different decos. If you want to run flinch free or guard up, you can easily sub out any of the agitator decos for those skills. Now compared to the Runa Nogagante Lance, we're looking at about a 6% increase on both of the poke combos. Again, assuming that there is a 10 dragon hit zone value on the monster. And we're hitting 1.93 to 1.3% higher on our combos versus the Rajang, assuming that there is a 10 thunder hit zone value. However, Barrieth, Bombro, and Black Veil Valhazak have slightly lower hits and values despite it being their best weakness. Against these matchups, the Rajang set starts to catch up and starts hitting about the same damage. But the slowest is a lot more comfortable, so we'd still recommend that. We also have a Guard 5 version of the set. It loses attack boost, dropping its EFR down by 5.84. This is tiny, and frankly, we recommend you run the Guard 5 version for lower knockback and chip. Again, you can sub out the Challenger-related decos for guard up and flinch free. Overall, the slow Lance ends up hitting the same raw damage while having slightly higher elemental damage compared to the Volcana Lance. But fire is one of the least ubiquitous elements in Iceborne. A decent ice weakness is still much more common than a decent fire weakness against monsters, making the Valkana Lance a better general use choice. And it also has like 4 times as many matchups that it is the best against. And because the slow simply requires more handicraft, it is a bit less flexible compared to the Valkana set. Handicraft related decos are just less common than crit eye related decos. Still, just like the Volcano Lance, this can beat the Runa no Gigante Lance on a lot of matchups even if they aren't 3 star weak to fire. Although use the same guideline as you do with the Volcano Lance. The Slowest Lance will outdamage a Runa no Gigante Lance unless the Dragon hit zone value is twice the fire hit zone value. Roughly. At the end of the day, we're talking 1 damage differences per poke, so use whatever you like. 
All right, next up we have the Dragon Lance. So the Dragon Lance surprisingly is not the Rune and Gigante option, it's actually the Shara Lance. At 764.78 effective raw and 63.75 effective element, this is the lowest effective raw option, but the highest element option out of all of the meta elemental lances. However, it's only 19.46 lower effective raw while having 15 more element compared to the Slos Lance. Now it does depend on hit to value ratios whether this or the slow lance will deal more damage per poke, but it is one of the top two highest damage potential lances in the game. Now, you don't see a lot of Shara weapons for elemental options across the board, and that's because normally free element is extremely expensive. However, for lance, free element is actually very cheap because offensive guard and free element combo decos exist. This means in terms of build efficiency, we're basically sacrificing either levels of attack boost or crit eye to get free element, which is an amazing trade-off slot efficiency-wise. Most other sets have to lose an entire level 4 slot to get a single level of free element and like a vitality or something. However, there is a very big issue with the Shara Lance, which is that it's really inflexible. You need 4 Handicraft, you need 3 free element, and you need 7 Crit Eye. This particular set just cannot fit both flinch free as well as guard up at the same time. In which case you need to run the Rajang Helmet instead. This costs you 2 Agitator and 2 Attack Boost, but does let you fit both guard up and flinch free. However, there is no room to fit more than one health boost into this set. So if you want to run more comfiness skills like that, you'll have to run the Runer Lance instead. Speaking of the Runer Lance, so while the Shara does have one of the highest potential damages per poke out of any lance in the game, its relative damage increase over the Runer Nogagante Lance is the lowest out of all the elemental lances because, well, the Runer Lance is also a dragon weapon. However, it's still about 2% more damage per combo. And compared to the Rajang Lance with a 10 Thunder hit zone value, it's still about 1 more damage per poke. So it is your best damage option versus Dragon Weak monsters. And it is still comfier than the Rajang set because you don't have to choose between using a high rank piece of armor or not having enough sharpness. As for the Guard 5 version of the set, it actually loses the most damage out of any Guard 5 version because it gains an attack boost but loses to Agitator. This ends up being a net loss of 5 true raw as well as 5% over capped affinity. This is by no means a big deal, it's still only going to work out to about 1 damage per poke. However, this set is also just as inflexible as the Guard 3 version. If you want to fit in either Guard Up or Flinch Free, you have to switch to the Rajang Helmet. But at this point, you cannot fit Guard Up and Flinch Free without losing very important skills. So if you want to run a Guard 5 multiplayer Dragon Lance, just use the Rune and Nogagante Lance from the Raw Meta Set video. If you have to fit in a bunch of these different comfort skills, you'll end up dealing more damage with the Rune and Nogagante Lance than the Shara Lance. Finally, we have Water Lance. For water, the best option is the Nemo Lance. That's the Namiel Lance. At 766.92 EFR and 44.85 EFE, this is frankly the weakest of the elemental lances. However, this is by far the highest EFR out of all the water lances and ends up being the highest damage. Between the 0.7 elemental modifier on lance pokes and the power of offensive guard on lance, the other water lances have a much higher element but end up doing much less damage. This being the weakest elemental lance overall really shows when you look at the damage deltas. Compared to the Runa no Gigante, we're looking at about a 3% damage increase. So at least compared to the Runa no Gigante Lance, this is always better to run versus water weak monsters. However, assuming that the monster you're hitting also has a 10 Thunder hit zone value which is on the lower end, then the Rajang Lance actually beats the Nemo. Overall, the Rajang Lance tends to pull ahead of the Nemo Lance if you're looking for pure damage. In fact, the only matchup where Water's the standout is the Garugas. As we mentioned earlier, even Teostra should be running the Valkana Lance. That all being said, even when the Rajang Lance beats the Nemo Lance by 1-2 to two damage per poke, the Nemo Lance still has 60 units of wipe. And when Offensive Guard is an active, the Nemo Lance does pull ahead on the Rajang Lance.
And compared to the Rajang Lance, this set has a super easy time fitting in flinch free, guard up, and other comfort skills. Just sub out challenger or attack boost echoes for the skills you need. You can always sub in some expert if you're dropping below 100% affinity. And just like other lances, you only lose one attack boost for guard 5. This is a very minor damage drop, and you're gaining a lot of protection from chip damage. Same as the guard 3 set, you can sub out challenger and attack boost related echoes for flinch free, guard up, or various comfy skills. Just add in a little more crit eye so you don't drop below 100% affinity. And that wraps it up guys. As always, thank you for watching. Sorry this one took a little bit longer, it's always a little more complicated to get elemental sets out. We appreciate your patience, we just don't want to put out misinformation. If you're looking for other hunters, you can check out our Discord server The Math Lotus Nest. You can also follow us on Twitter, or check me out on Twitch. This is the best way to support us for free. Shout out to Honey Hunter for providing the tools you use to make sets. And a huge thank you to our friend RhythmWiz, one of the set optimizers over on our Discord server. Rhythm and I have been sharing math notes on this game since long before this channel existed. He was instrumental with helping me with the set building, with calculating the damage deltas, and in particular he did build all of the Guard 5 sets as well as calculate which matchups each one was strong against. And of course a huge thank you to our friend Butts, a Lance speedrunner who provided the background footage for this video. I would not even know where to start with Lance builds and practical recommendations for skills for Lances without having many many discussions with him. Be sure to check out his channel, he has some phenomenal lance runs on there, link in the top right and the description. And of course none of this would be possible without the generosity of our patrons. And especially huge thank you to our new patrons Chase Davis, Hades and Twilight Lexi. Thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for your patience these past few weeks with our slow production schedule. Things are getting back to normal and we are looking at putting out more videos per week again so thank you so much for your support in this dead time. Also, speaking of patrons, the patrons have spoken and the next meta video to come out is going to be Hunting Horn. Also, we do have on the Patreon right now another poll for the meta video to come after Hunting Horn. Any patron of any dollar amount is allowed to vote on these polls, so if you're interested in doing that, head over to our Patreon. Alright, that is all we have for you on this one. We do have plenty more videos on the way. We are working on Hunting Horn meta and I am also working on an Artillery 5 video right now. So if you'd like to see that as soon as it comes out, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, and that way YouTube lets you know as soon as our videos go live. Happy hunting, hunters. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.